All right, folks. Welcome to a map you might not know a lot about because the map was introduced like two weeks ago. It's called Sandrift. This map was introduced with the Empire Wars changes, and we already have the smallest possible version of it. How crazy is that? We've got Beery playing as the Portuguese up against Prisma's Incas. Now, the big thing to know on this map is you cannot build on the um, on the lighter sand, the softer looking sand. So that means no farms. Uh, and uh, well, actually, you might be able to build other buildings, but I just know you can't farm around the TC. Maybe you could build walls or something. So on a map where you already don't have a lot of space for farms, where on earth are you supposed to get food? So like every single like rhino and zebra and little berry bush is just so valuable here because food income becomes so difficult. Now there's been a trend where these two have slowed down with the towers and have really prioritized going for archers. And I could see that being a good play here to just deny resources, right? Like the wood, the gold, everything is going to be far away from the TC. Archers are outranging the towers too. So I, I really do feel like if I had to predict anything right now, we could see just an archer war. Maybe combined with a couple towers, but more so like maybe defensive towers would be my guess. Yo, Monster CC, thanks for gifting J Meister the sub. That was very nice of you. Did you pick Jay Meister or was it random and Jay Meister got selected from everyone that's here? How lucky was Jay Meister? I don't know. Doesn't really matter. So we maybe we'll end up seeing a couple of Vils floating around trying to kill the zebras that can't be pushed in themselves. Uh Villager could die here. Viri needs to be careful. It's interesting that the direction the players are chopping wood is a bit further away from the other, right? We've got this, this nice little corner here for Beery. Oh, man. Everything is here. Zebra, relics, wood, stone. Prisma will likely be split up because there's not a ton of gold in this area. But the gold is here. I actually think this gold area is nice and snug, nice and safe. So you could wall and keep that gold pretty well protected. This isn't played on all visible, but it kind of feels like all visible at times once you get a couple units on the field. Because, I mean, th this is Beery's vision, and he already sees the majority of the map. So, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, like I said, it might feel like all visible. This is kind of funny. The mining camp is blocking villager access, so they will have to walk around, which could be really bad. Like, if your villagers need to escape, Having to path towards the middle could be a problem. Yeah, organ guns could be really crazy here. But can you safely get to organ guns? There's going to be another mining camp that kind of blocks pathing here. So when you say nice and snug, I immediately hear nice and snug in the back of my bass from the Fatoria song. <laughs> I don't actually remember that lyric from that song. Oh, yeah, and then it's like, wait a second. Yeah, 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 I do remember. Scout goes down for Beery. But he did see that his opponent was going for a mining camp. So this is nice. This is a dual-purpose mining camp. You can go to stone and gold, both of which could be really helpful here. And both players on the way to the next stage. I'm guessing, again, this will be fast archers. If this was game one, they would both go for towers. I think they might have realized now that the towers maybe aren't that strong. Since Beery scouted this... Um, oh, no, never mind. I thought he was coming over here to kill the zebra because he doesn't have a scout and his opponent does. He's actually pushing in the zebra with the villager right now. The madman. I love the look of the minimap. Just look at the minimap and look... You could tell Capture Age was not designed to show uh, an ultra-small minimap. <laughs> Just how quickly things move on the minimap is so funny to me. They're skipping so many tiles. Beery says, Ovejas. What does that mean? Translation, please. What are they talking about? We've got a villager sneaking here for Beery. Sheeps. Ah, okay. 
He's asking how many sheeps he has. This is a nice little spot to sneak for Beery. There's an archer range for Prisma. There's an archer range now for Beery, but Prisma can actually see what Beery's doing. I, I think the positive here for Beery is you can, you can assume and probably assume correctly what your opponent is doing. He's not doing that, though. He is actually looking with his vill, I think, to find out. Didn't you learn Spanish even by cheating? I mean, I learned a little bit, but I didn't exactly need to use Spanish in my life until, you know, maybe when I started to cast people like this speak in Spanish, which was way later in my life. <laughs> so, but yes, I did. I did cheat in Spanish class, um, which is, you know, maybe maybe that's the problem. I really like Beery's map. I don't like his current position right now. I think that his opponent having the extra sheep plus having the extra llama with the Incas is nice. The I mean, Beery got really badly pop capped, so he doesn't have as many archers as his opponent. And Prisma is producing archers and eagles pretty much nonstop here. This is where you might need to consider a defensive tower if you're Beery. Really seems to be struggling at the moment just to get the mar army mass. And we've seen games where players will go for different strategies and they kind of clash. And we've also seen games where they kind of go for the same thing. And right now, no loom even for Prisma is kind of crazy, but Prisma just piling on all sorts of aggression. And Beery struggling to keep up with this. He's going to go for a blacksmith, though, to hope that his archers can get fletching. He is forced to fight with Vils. He has really no choice but to use Vils as part of these engagements, but he loses that Vil. He could lose the archers. Prisma's just running right through. Prisma says, I don't care, man. And this is all Prisma now. Prisma kills another Vil. This is going to be a very lackluster game. <laughs> it's just Prisma's playing too good. And I, you got to think, like, maybe a preemptive tower could have helped Beery here. The towers could still protect you. It protects your wood and it protects your gold. I think the moment just kind of snowballed on him a little bit. Remember, he was up 3-1 in this series. And now, like, Prisma is picking him apart. More villagers are going to go down. Feels very reminiscent of the previous game between these two. I think just stubbornness from Beery. You got to make a tower here, man. You got to make a tower. You don't have the army. The only way you hold here is if you tower and maybe too late. Trying to build the tower now would just lead to more villagers dying. And oh, man, they flood over to the berries. Thankfully, you get some wood when you take berries. But ugh, the inefficiency. It's painful. And I think another thing that will be painful is getting to the next stage. Not going to be easy when you can't farm around your TC here. So, maybe if you work in enough skirms here for your Beery, could counter the archer play. There's only two weak eagles out there. Beery does have fletching and Prisma does not at the moment. Ooh, good micro from Beery so far. Actually, really good micro from Beery so far. Nice recovery. A fletching on the way from Prisma and he dives for the gold, but he does get some of his army trapped. So he'll sacrifice a couple archers for that. In the end, I think he'll take that trade. But nice job from Beery. Two military against four now. It was much worse before. And now it's two military against two. Now it's two mil three military against one. Uh-oh. Look at the way Prisma is building his buildings. I think this is so smart. To build them in a line, instead of cramming them into spots you're going to need things... You're going to need, like, farms and whatnot. I think this is the way to do it. Ooh, Beery. Might be might be a small chance for him, right? It, it's just an archer war at the moment. Beery actually can't justify making more skirms, though, because he has nothing on food now. That's about to be the same for Prisma, though. These skirms are going to be very valuable. Uh, Vixit, we had a game go to Imp earlier in the tiny maps. So yes, it does happen. It would be on maps where aggression and feudal age doesn't work as much. But I think of all the small maps, we've had a lot of, of interesting things. We actually had a wonder victory attempted in uh, 
in a game uh, a couple months back on the, I think it was Michi. It was crazy. <laughs> I, I forget if the wonder completed. It did, right? Uh, the map was this tiny as well. They actually crammed a wonder in there. My goal with this series is to complete all the maps we can, all the maps that exist in the smallest possible form, and then eventually change um, some settings, maybe, right? I think we found the settings that work. This is crazy. Beery's losing all of his vills on gold. He is counterattacking. But yeah, we hadn't done this map. There's still many more we need to get through. A lot of the maps people are asking me in my chat about, though, are in the playlist. So you guys could just, just binge the playlist and look through them. But I think, like, at the start, right, Prisma did... Uh, he added the Eagles with the Archers. He had the extra Goats, which these guys talked about. And, uh, yeah, he just... He kind of beat Beery to the punch here. Beery consistently catching up in military numbers when it looks like he's out of the game. But 17 Villagers against 36... Prisma has Archer screwed up out of both ranges. It does feel like Prisma's just going to be able to outproduce the guy at this point. Yeah, like Smallest Force Nothing was done. That was actually the very first one that we did. Nomad was done. We've done a lot. We've done a lot of the like really common maps at this point. I think the Michi one was Snippy and somebody. I think it was. Was it like Snippy and Daniela? That was actually midi low instead of high ranks. Which I think for the next batch of small maps, we're going to do midi low instead of high ranks because it can bring us some different types of games. Prisma on the verge of winning three straight here, guys. And Archer seems to be how he does it. Just fast Archer builds. I think one of the remaining two maps, straight Archers will not be a great play. And there's actually one that incorporates water. Like, a lot of water, which we haven't seen yet. Beery kind of getting boxed in. Getting micro down. And Prisma knows he's got this. And the GG's called. Prisma wins three straight. And uh, is up 4-3. Now, it is a play all nine. So, even if Prisma wins the next game, we're still going to have game number nine. But, uh, great series here. And, and again, this small map wasn't the most exciting, right? I'm not going to sit here and say, oh my god, what a great map. I think, again, the fact that you can't build farms around your TC and then the map is super, super small makes it so much worse for you as a player. But it felt natural to, you can take wood, you can take gold, you can make archers. And Prisma, just his early attack on Beery hurt Beery so bad. It's funny because the previous games, we've seen towers look weak. So I think Beery thought, well, I don't even want to make a tower. But I think if your wood and your gold is being taken in the same spot, that tower would have made some sense. And then Portuguese have cheap gold units, right? Maybe he could have recovered there. But it definitely got beyond the point of return for him. And every time he went over there, he was losing villagers. 7,200 res collected there from Prisma. 4,500 from Beery. Does look very nice. Maybe it didn't produce the most exciting game. Maybe that had to do with how good Prisma played. But that was the uh, smallest... Sand drift ever.